Just take your body.
Get to 
give God some praise. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you for tonight. Blessed be the Holy One of Israel. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Teacher. Thank you, our Mentor. Thank you, our Deliverer. Thank you, the Bishop of our souls. Thank you, the foundation where we build The fountain that never runs dry. The lily, Father, we give you all the praises. Thank you, the living water. We worship you. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for the redeemed Christian church of God. Thank you for our fathers in the Lord. Thank you for our mothers in the Lord. Blessed be your holy name. We worship you. Lord, be glorified in this time once again. Let the flesh be brought under the subjection of the Holy Spirit. And let Jesus be glorified. Thank you, Ebenezer, our helper. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise to their feet and give the Lord a shout. One more time before you sit, before you sit, help me say to your neighbor, it is not too late for your story to change. Say it prophetically. It is not too late for your story to change. If you believe it thunderously once again, raise your hands and give the Lord a shout. Ma, 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 ma. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to specially thank our father and our mother in the Lord. Please, can we celebrate mommy and daddy? and uh, the Gio. Please put your hands together. Let's celebrate our Father. I thank all the ministers, all the pastors, the senior pastors, all the ministers in the house. I thank all the workers, the members, so much for having me here. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I bring you greetings from the from South-South region, from the body of Christ in the South-South region. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Lastly, I want to celebrate my brother. I want to celebrate my brother who ministered before me. The Lord bless you, sir. Amen. We are not competing. We are only here to do what God will have us do. Amen. So, according to his grace bestowed upon me, I will do my father's business. Hallelujah. Already we know the theme on eagle swing. On eagle swing. The text, my text is going to be taken from the book of chapter 32, 11, 12, and 13. Deuteronomy chapter 32, 11, 12, and 13. And I read from here. And as, as, and, as an eagle stirred up her nest, flaunted over the young, spreaded abroad her wings, taketh them, bringeth them on their wings, so the Lord alone did lead them. Somebody say, so the Lord alone did lead me. I didn't hear you say, so the Lord alone did, did lead me. And there was no strange God with him. Praise the Lord. Verse 13 as the last. He made him write on high places. If that Bible is your own, underline those two words, high places, because we are going to talk about it. He made him write on high places, underline high places, high places of the earth, praise the Lord, that he, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the rock. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have carefully studied scriptures over some time. 
And I realized about two animals that scriptures, three striking animals that scriptures mostly use to express the capacity, the abilities, and the potencies of God. About three animals that days to define. About three animals that days to describe who God is. And I stumbled on the lion. Revelation chapter 5 verse 5. Revelation chapter 5 verse 5. The Bible there talks about how that God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And then I stumbled on the second one. Which is the lamb. The lamb. John chapter 1 verse 29. John chapter 1 verse 29. Talks about the lamb. Who is Jesus that taketh away the sins of the world? The lamp of God, rather. The lamp of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Do I have a witness? Is it in your Bible? And then the last, in no particular order, that I stumble on was the ego. Ego. My brother went as far as explaining and defining what an ego is. So I'll not bore you with much of it, apart from a few. Praise the Lord. One significant thing about the ego is the strength. Praise the Lord. I'll just give a simple definition. An ego is a large and strong bird. A large and strong bird. With an effective and efficient eyesight, it kills other birds and other animals for meal. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we talk of the five outstanding features. The eagle is fearless. The eagle is tenacious. What does it mean to be tenacious? Unwilling to give up. The eagle is dogged. Three, the eagle is a high flyer. Everybody say high flyer. Let me say high flyer. The eagle is a high flyer. The eagle is large in wings, large in wings. And lastly, the eagle is tender, a tender, caring animal. Tender, caring, tender, loving. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One of the things that gives eagle pride one major thing that ego finds pride in, one thing that makes ego who he is, is every other feature of an ego, every other beautiful feature, every other powerful, magnificent feature of an ego relies on this thing. And what is that? His wings. Everybody say wings. Say wings. Every other thing. The eagle will need wings to have and to, to, to take care of the babies, of the eaglets rather. The eagle will have to engage the services of its wings to be a high flyer, to be tenacious, to be fearless. What Samson's hay meant to Samson is exact thing that the wings means to the eagle. The eagle waking up one morning to realize there is no wings attached to his body is synonymous as Samson who woke up to realize that there was no hair on his, on his head. So this is how important the wing is for the eagle. Praise the Lord. The phrase on eagle wings, the phrase on eagle, eagle, eagle's wings is used to describe and explain the character and the nature of God. Am I talking to somebody? If you're hearing me, shout hallelujah. The phrase on eagle's wing is used to describe and explain the character and the nature of God. The eagle we are talking about today is God, not man. Are referring to today is not a thing, it's a personality, and this personality is God. So, if I was to rephrase, 
if I was permitted by our father to rephrase the subject matter, I will say that I will say eagle's wing can be rephrased to be stepping on God's ability, stepping on the supernatural ability of God. It could also mean divine help. It could also mean depending on God's ability. It could also mean to mount on the solid rock. To mount on the solid rock. How do I know this? Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. You yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wing and brought you to myself. This was God speaking. You yourself, you saw the things I did. How I carried you. In a literal sense, there was no physical eagle who carried the children of Israel. Do I have a witness? There was no physical animal who carried. But then, God was saying, God was saying to them, I carried you on an eagle's wing. And then God simply explained this thing to me. He said to me, every time it seems as though I am not there with you, I am always there with you. You may not see me, but I am the one actually carrying you. You may not see my face, but I am the one actually moving with you. God was presence there was no eagle there was no animal their presence but this was God saying to them I was the one who I, I don't know what you are going through I don't know the pains you are facing I don't know the difficulties you are encountering I came to encourage you that God is with you help me say by your side say God is with you say God is carrying you And then you get to consider the number of persons God said he was carrying. It was not just one man. What does this mean? The wing of God is big enough. The wings of God is big enough. The wings of God is strong enough to carry. The wings can carry diabetes. The wings can carry, can, can carry HIV. The wings can carry leprosy. The wings can carry pains. That wings can carry miscarriage. As long as you put it on his, on his wings, healing will come in the name of Jesus. I carried all of you. How then do you think that I, who brought you on an eagle's wing to this place, how do you think, how will you ever be deceived that I will not carry you further? The same God who carried you from the day you were born up to today, who never complained for one day, who never murmured for one day, who never eased for one day, that same God is carrying you all through your life. If I'm talking to somebody, raise your hands and shout fire. Tap your neighbor and say, my God is able to carry me. Briefly, why must I step on the eagle's wing? People don't know that it's a must that they step on this wing. So long as we are in this kingdom, it's a must. Because by strength shall no man prevail. Why must I step on the eagle's wing? One, note this. The high place of God is the deep place of God. If you must get there, you must... Am I talking to somebody? If you are hearing me, sir, I hear you. The high place of God is the deep place of God. Somebody wrote a song and said, take me to the place, a place you are, that secret place. You don't get there by connection. You don't get there by money. You, go, you don't get there by bribing your way through. You don't get there by negotiation. You get there on the eagle's wing. Lift up your hands and say, tonight I will step on the eagle's wings by force. I am not hearing you. If I hear you, I'll say to you, say tonight I will get on the eagle's wings by force. Number two, why must I step on the eagle's wing? For divine acceleration. <laughs> I came from Akwaibom, 
we arrived last night. That journey took us about roughly, roughly, roughly um, 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 12 hours because we came by the road. So it was 12 hours. But I tell you, the man who flew in from Aquaibum to this place got here, got to Lagos within 45 minutes. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? He came in within 45 minutes. What was that? Divine speed, acceleration. I even, even as the aircraft will fly high, even as the aircraft will, will, will fly speedily, so was his steps accelerated. Men struggle so much because they've not yet identified who can make them run faster. You are in a family where everybody is struggling. You are in a place where everybody, where, where it is difficult for men to survive. It's difficult for women to, it's not as if you are not struggling. You have done everything. The man at the pool of Bethsaida said to Jesus, Master, I have tried my best. Every time the angel comes to stay the water, I don't just sit and look at the water. Every time an angel comes to stay up the water, it's not as if I don't make attempts. But the more I make attempts, the more I fail. The more I tried to launch into the deeper, the more I fell. And Jesus said to them, I came that you may fly on my wings. When you step on eagle's wing, you don't need to pay transport. Are you hearing me in this house? When you step on eagle's wings, you don't, there is no checkpoint on the road. When you step on the eagle's wings, ah, there are no gallops on the road. Because actually, you are not using the road. You are in the atmosphere of impossibilities. Are you hearing me? You are in the atmosphere of impossibilities can call you to order. No one can query you. No one can stop you. Raise your hands. Stand to your feet. Say to 50 people in this house, I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. It doesn't matter what stop men in my family. I am unstoppable. It doesn't matter what stop women in my family. I am unstoppable because the glory of God is upon me and I am mounting on the eagle's wing. I am mounting on the eagle's wing. So I will saw. Shot fire. Lest I forget, eagles don't just fly, they saw. There's a difference between flying and sawing. They saw. Give it up for Jesus. Not me. Not for me. For Jesus. The next point after divine acceleration. Why must I step on the eagle's wings? Because, listen, principalities and powers are only brought into obedience and submission when you come from a high place. Why you keep commanding demons, demons don't, res don't respond, is that your level is even below the demons. There are some Christians that their spiritual level is even below demons. They have refused to grow. They don't have spiritual structure. They don't have spiritual weight. Even demons had fortified themselves to be better than your Christianity. It is only when you step into the arena of the supernatural. It's only when you step on the eagle's wing and it takes you to a high place. That is where you begin to command territorial demons. Some of you, you still call the name of Jesus in the dream. The demon will still slap you. In fact, the more you call Jesus, the more the masculine is pursuing you. Where the question is, from which, on what basis, from which point of view, from uh, on what dimensions are you calling him? Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians 6 and 12. Ephesians 6 and 12 talks about, okay, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Look at this. So if you must contend with them, you must step on a higher place. 
and that is the place of God. A place where you call one, 20 will come. A place where you say, hey, territories will crumble. May God take you to that place tonight. If you are the one I'm talking to, touch your neighbor, let your neighbor know you are falling. I say, may God take you to such places tonight. I just take two more from there, then I'm done. Why must I be on eagle's wing? Kings and queens gather only in high places. <laughs> kings and queens, that's what? Gather. In. You don't find kings and queens anywhere. They have a glory. They have a place where they rule. If you are looking for a king, where do you find him? In his palace. If you are looking for a president, where do you find him? In Aso Rock, in White House. If you are looking for great men, you go to great places. This is Go into high places. You must step into high places. Your business into high places. Your finances into high places. Places. All you lay your hands to do into high places. Lift up your hands and say yes. High places. It is in, in high places you discover yourself. It is in high places you matter. In high places your value and your worth is naturally celebrated. Ah, uh, am I talking to somebody? In high places, the little you do is celebration. But you see, in low places, even your best is complained upon. Your best is never good enough in low places. Tell your neighbor, step on eagle's wing. Are you blessed in this house? Lastly, on that, I'll say, it is in high places that weakness is exchanged for strength. Weakness is exchanged for strength. For they that wait upon the Lord, what happens? They shall, some, some persons are too weak. Marriages, your marriage is going down. You're even, you're, you don't even understand what is going on. Sudden weakness, even your spiritual life is weak, is not your fault. It's part of the persecution and the troubles of life. But it will be your fault if you will intentionally not step on the eagle's wing. They that wait upon the Lord, he brought, he brought an eagle to explain what will happen to you. He said, your strength shall be what? Renew. And you mount up. Say to somebody, mount up. Say, mount up. Finally, how do you step on these wings? How do you step on these wings? I just give us two. Put away weight and sin. So many people are too weighty for God to carry. So many people are too heavy for even God to carry. The Bible speaking in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Hallelujah. The Bible speaking in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Talks about we putting away sins. Putting away weight. All those sins that easily beset us. On the wings of eagle, there is holiness. The wings of eagle is not contaminated. It's not just for anybody. It's for men and women who are intentional about God. Putting away every weight. Putting away every sin that easily beset us. What has made your life too heavy for God to carry? What has made your business too heavy for God to carry? It's true you are paying tight, but yet the foundation of your business, you know, is not on God. It's true you are coming to church, but yet you know you have another altar you are servicing. This service will not make sense to you until you lay one aside. Put away every sin. Say to somebody, put away sin. Put away weights. Hear this. I define this lastly. What is sin? Sin is act against God. What is weight? Weight are the issues of life. 
things that makes you troubled, things that makes you worried. You don't have money in your pocket. And as soon as the choir said, lift up your hands, let us worship the King of glory. As soon as you wanted to lift up your hands, you remember that you are owing the landlord, you immediately drop it. Those are weights. Weights will distract you in the place of worship. Weights will distract you in the place of God. Put away every weight and every sin that easily beset us. Finally, finally, how do I step on eagle's wing? Don't be afraid of height. To some of us, the high places we are aiming for, we are not even ready for it. The glory that is about to happen to us, Bible said, it has not come to our hearts. Neither has it even happened to our imaginations. Are you even ready for the top? Ask somebody, are you ready for the top? Say, are you ready for this height? In the course of the service, our beloved Father in the Lord, we will call for our tackle. We will call that you come and resurrender, that you come and resurrender again so that your life can be what the Holy Spirit can carry. Please, when that call comes, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. Stand to your feet and say this prayer. Even, even, even as I live, stand to your feet, stand to your feet and, and, and say this prayer. Say, my father, my father. God can only carry those that are weak. Say, my father, my father. I am too weak to run this race alone. I am, carry me, carry me, carry me. Carry me on your wings. Carry me, carry me. Carry me, somebody pray, somebody. Carry me. If you are going to give an eagle's wings offering tonight, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Quickly, our Bible reading is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. He said, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that all the messages you have heard during the minister's conference, all the way during this special program, they will find place in your life and you'll be able to do them in the name of Jesus. On this offering tonight, you want to look at the eaglet and the mature eagle. When you look at the eaglet, when they are learning to fly, they flip, they flop, and they just move their wings anyhow. They do not understand the current of the wind. They are immature. They make a lot of noise. And they are satisfied with leftover from Mama Eagle. But when you compare that to the mature eagle, which is the offering you are going to give tonight, the mother eagle, the mature eagle, understand the wind current. They are mature. They understand the sign of the time. They understand the current of the wind. And these are the people that give bountifully unto the Lord. If you can understand the move of the wind tonight, I know that I know that I know. The eagle portion blessing shall be yours in the name of Jesus. If you can just put your hand on your ears and say, I can hear, I can hear. I can feel the wind of the Spirit blowing. There are some people in the scriptures that we are able to understand the wind blowing and the soul during that time. And their life was never the same. David, in 2 Samuel 24, 24, 2 Samuel 24, 24, he says, Neither will I offer burnt offering unto the Lord that does not cost me nothing. When you offer something to the Lord that costs you something, you are going to have an eagle share. Mary Magdalene, in Mark chapter 14, verse 3, Mark 14, verse 3, she poured that oil on the alabaster box on the master Jesus. Until today, we are mentioning her. If you can feel the move of the wind tonight, you are going to give an offering that costs you something, 
you are going to give an alabaster box offering unto the Lord, something that costs you something. This is the highest exalted altar in the redeemed Christian church of God. And I know that I know by the reason of your giving tonight, God will speak prosperity into your life. God will speak abundance into your life in the name of Jesus. So quickly package your offering tonight in the name of Jesus. Make sure it is an offering that costs you something. Make sure it's your alabaster, but because the wind is blowing, the wind is blowing. If you don't catch it now, you have to wait until next year when we are celebrating our father's 83rd birthday. Package your offering and wave it unto the Lord respectfully and say, my Lord and my God, this is my alabaster box offering. This is my matured ego offering in the name of Jesus. This is my offering unto you, O God, in the name of Jesus. This offering is costing me something. Quickly put it together, and if you are going to give tonight, look at the screen in front of you, and either you are going to send it through any of those uh, sites that are listed, the banks listed there, and also you are going to package your offering. If you are writing a check, write it, RCCG Camp Development. As we get ready to give unto the Lord now, the choir will minister unto the Lord, Dance respectfully and give your offering tonight and your life will never be the same. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Only you deserve the glory. Only you deserve the honor. Almighty God. Only you deserve the glory. Only you deserve the honor, Almighty God. Only you deserve the glory. Only you deserve the honor, Almighty God. Only you deserve the glory. Only you deserve the honor, Almighty God. From generation to generation. Only you deserve the honor, Almighty God. Only you deserve the glory.
if you have not given your offering as I pray, please go to the nearest basket and give tonight. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for the opportunity to give tonight. As the eagles soar upon the current of the wind, I decree that every restriction, every limitation to your progress in the mighty name of Jesus, you will soar over them tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, as you bear your people's on eagles wings in the wilderness to protect them from danger, by the reason of this offering, I command divine protection over your life in the name of Jesus. I command supernatural abundance into your life in the name of Jesus. I command divine provision into your life in the name of Jesus. I command angelic care into your life in the name of Jesus. By the order of the deliverance from Egypt, receive redemption from calamity. Receive redemption from sorrow. Receive redemption from disappointment. I decree financially, maritally, ministerially, you will soar like the eagle. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Can somebody shout hallelujah?